Kayla Itzinez, welcome to the Maz Hakim podcast. Oh, thank you so much for having me. Fellow Australian in Dubai, um, Dubai loves you. We've had you back Aww. so many times. So many times. It's good to be here. I love it. What do you love about Dubai? Oh my God, everything. Don't even get me started. Okay, landed yesterday. The weather is perfect. I know everyone's like, no, but it gets too hot. No, but mm-hmm. listen, every time I've come here, the weather has been on for me. The food is amazing and the people are beautiful. So like lovely, kind, so like willing to help. Love it. And uh, what can we expect from Dubai Active? You're here for Dubai Active this weekend, which we're super excited about. Uh, Are you getting a chance to rest a little bit and play a little bit in Dubai or is it all work this weekend? No, no, no. I'm I'm going to – I want to meet all my members. So for the people who are listening who are interested in coming to Dubai Active, so Saturday I'm doing a meet and greet, a Q&A, and and then Sunday get ready because I am doing a boot camp, (gasps) high-intensity – But providing modifications, guys, so don't worry. But please come and join in because it's going to be amazing. And how regularly do do you do these boot camps, like, for yourself? Like, how regularly do I work out or do I do a boot camp? Do you do a boot camp, like the intense, extreme Oh, listen. (laughs) (laughs) It's like, it's just for the, it's just for the shows. Do you know what I mean? Like, when I'm coming, when I'm actually training, I love, like, don't get me wrong, I love high intensity training, but I also love strength training, which I think is really big now in Dubai, which I absolutely love. I just Mm -hmm. went to a few gyms and it was big on like the big weightlifting, big strength training. And I absolutely was like blown away. It was incredible. And uh, what does your sort of workout routine look like now? Like I said, like just that, like it's a bit of high intensity, a bit of strength training. So that would look like something like doing a deadlift, but also like skipping as well in the same workout, which is like not really like what people traditionally train like. But you have to remember I'm on a stage and I have to speak and I'm going to train at the same time. So yeah, it's, it's a lot of work. And I've got two kids. Yeah, I know. Congratulations. Thank you. Te- Jackson is now 10 months old. Yes, Jackson is 10 months old and 10 months old. And Anna is going to turn five wow. next year. So you are someone who just gave birth like 10 months ago. Yeah. I'm trying to get my head around that. Wait, what is the date? Surely it's, yeah, it could be, yeah, it's still 10 months. 10 months. And you worked out throughout your entire pregnancy. I did. I did with Jax, but with Anna, no. I was okay. so sick. So, like, wow. anyone who's currently pregnant and you are so sick, just rest. Like, don't try and work out. I did a few things, like, when I could for, like, people like, oh, what exercises can I do when I was pregnant? So, I was like, I feel good for 20 minutes. Like, let me record a few things. But yeah. otherwise, I was, no, nauseous the whole time. Really? It sucked. Mm-hmm. And what's your advice to someone who's listening now, who's either planning on getting pregnant or is currently pregnant? Look, like everyone is different. So if you feel great and you want to work out, obviously with the clearance of your doctor and and working with healthcare professionals, do it. But if you feel sick and you feel tired and your body's telling you to rest, please just rest. Like I'm not pushing anyone to do anything that they don't want to do during pregnancy. That is hard enough. You are growing a human. (laughs) And I feel like rest for women especially is really underrated. So important. Like if you can prioritize one thing, it would be sleep. Like, and that's so hard to say. If you're a new mom, disregard this because like it's impossible. But anyone else, if you can prioritize your sleep and get into a good sleep routine, that is when your body will do the best work. It will recover and you'll feel so much better. And how many hours of sleep do you think is ideal? My honest answer is I think six hours of sleep. And when I say that, listen, not six hours in bed, people listening. It is like you need to be (laughs) asleep for six hours, I think, is enough to function. Everyone says eight hours. I feel like sometimes that is not doable if you have especially kids. But I think you should be asleep for at least six hours solid. Yeah. What are they called? REM sleep or something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what does your routine look like before bed? Do you use like blue light glasses or or not really? No. Okay. But (laughs) no, I don't go that far. I love a good nighttime routine. So like it's always like shower, sleep tea. So like you can get it from anywhere, Mm -hmm. sleep tea. Like chamomile or something. Yeah. And then just into bed and then I just like sort of watch TV shows and then I switch a timer on my TV for 30 minutes, if you want to do this, guys. A timer on my t- TV, turn off after 30 minutes, and then I put sleep hypnosis on YouTube yes. with a black screen. I just find this thing that says sleep hypnosis, black screen, and yeah. I listen to that, and I'm asleep. Sometimes I listen to those really boring stories that, like, actually oh, put me to sleep. Oh, the nothing stories that just tell you nothing? I love it. Yeah. 
Uh, so, Kayla, you've changed so many women's lives around the world. What was that moment where you sort of realised, wow, like I've become a global fitness sensation? I mean, like I don't, <laughs> I don't feel like I ever thought that. The moment that I thought, wow, was when I decided to, because I was working with the radio stations like similar yes. to this, okay. to do boot camps around Australia. And I thought that they were the ones that were really like bringing the members, because obviously they're on the radio. They're like, you know, doing all the advertisements for me. And I'm, yep. I'm just a kid from Adelaide, South Australia. So then I went over to London to do my first boot camp solo, mm-hmm. not working with the radio stations, just purely using social media as like yeah. my platform to advertise. And because the boot camp was free, I was like, what if no one comes? Like, what if absolutely no one comes? And then my team was like playing jokes to me because they put me in a green room and they were like, no one's here. And I was like, oh, oh my God, this is so sad. No <laughs> one's here. And they're like, well, there's a few people here. Like, and then I could hear voices. I can hear like a fair few people. They're like, anyway, anyway, I walked out and there was 2,000 people. The stadium was packed. Like you couldn't fit any more people. And then we did a massive workout and I almost cried. I was like, oh my God, like there's 2,000 women in this room wanting to, each other to do well. It's incredible. What do you think sets you apart from like other fitness influencers? I mean, you were the OG fitness influencer can i call you fitness no. influencer? Okay, sorry. <laughs> stop calling you an influencer okay, I'm sorry. So, a global sensation a personal trainer personal well, that's really what i am i'm a personal trainer i think like things that set me apart from other people um and especially here um in the middle east was that i i cut out half the market so i focused yes. really on women only so that was yeah. like the straight like never ever did i train a guy mm-hmm. even when i first started as personal trainer i started women's only fitness yeah and then i really like ended up just being like you, uh, well, things that I that I that I wanted to do was like never sexualize myself. I always mm-hmm. said I would never sex, sexualize myself. Sell a brand, like I would only be authentic. I would only work with people that I absolutely love, and like yeah. just help support women be the most confident that they could. And I stuck to that. I'm a family person. I love community. I love family dinners. I love bringing people into my home and, mm-hmm. and feeding them. So I'm like, I think I just stuck to that. People just fell in love with it because they love that. They love the culture. Mm-hmm. The, it's Greek culture. I was just about to say, yeah. Greek culture is all about family and food. And food. So much food. And that's like a thing that um, I travel the world and, and I see so many women having so much negative um, like emotions around eating because they weren't raised like me. Like for me, yeah. in my family, and I feel a lot of families here, food is a celebration. It's it's. When you've done something good, everyone's like, "Oh, let's let's eat, let's cook, let's like let's celebrate together." And mm-hmm. and when we sat down at the table, we sat down together. Mm-hmm. And like all my greatest memories was around food. So I only think positively about food, and that's not the case for so many women, which is so sad. It it really is. And the Greek food, I guess, is part of the Mediterranean diet, which they say is one of the best in the world. The best. Look, yeah. like, don't quote me on it. <laughs> I'm going to say, like, for me, it's the best food. I yes. love Mediterranean food. And just sharing food as well. Yes. And just the use of, like, olive oil and the meats and the breads and just everything is just, just delicious. And lots of salads. Lots of salad, Lots of fresh food. Yeah. How important is portion control when it comes to food? I mean, like, again, this isn't something that I've ever struggled with. And I'm so sorry for anyone that, like, that does struggle with it. And, I, and I, what I would say to someone is... If you are not good at something, it's all there's always going to be someone better than you. So there's always a nutritionist or a dietitian that you can work with. There's someone that you can go to to help you with this sort of stuff. Yeah. For me, it's easy for me to say, oh, you know, like, um, don't worry about it. I, I'm 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 good with portion control. So like, no, there's someone more experienced than me. I'm not a nutritionist and I'm not a dietitian. So anyone listening, please, if you need the help, go and get it. Yeah, love that. And how important do you think social media was in your journey because you started sort of early it was sort of before tiktok uh where you can really get famous really quickly <laughs> you know? uh, look it's like the most important it, it, i if, if there was no social media ever and like let's just go back in time and there was nothing i would just be a personal trainer from yes. adelaide south australia and that's all i would ever be and that's as far as i would ever go and yes i was doing really well in adelaide and i loved it so much But without social media, like there's good and there's bad. But without it, I would never be here. Never. Mm -hmm. And how big is the sweat community now? Millions and millions. (laughs) But Julia. All over the world. Dude, I I literally just ran into someone outside that was like, I'm a sweat member. So incredible. I love it. So you are a global fitness sensation that you don't like to admit. (laughs) Not a fitness influencer, but yeah. (laughs) Global, I'll, I'll, look, I'll, I'll claim the global fitness sensation. Thank you so much. <laughs> and if someone's listening and they 
they're starting out in fitness. There's lots of personal trainers across the UAE and they want to get some traction and they're good at fitness and they're good at training people, but they can't sort of get all the pieces together. What advice would you have to them? Listen, like you can be good at fitness, you can have traction, you can have all of that stuff, but it, what it is and what it comes down to is passion, pure passion. You have to want it. Like if you want to grow in this industry, in not only this industry, but industries, any industry, you have to be passionate about it. You have to want to help people. You have to not be money driven and driven by money because personal training is a hard job. You have to actually get in there. The hours are, are crazy. You're working you know, five o'clock in the morning to 11 o'clock and then you get a small break and then you work from lunchtime all the way to like nine or 10 o'clock at night because you're mm -hmm. trying to fit in other people's schedules. Yeah. Like it's a hard job. So you have to love it. You have to be passionate and you have to want to help people. Like me, I'm cut off my arm and give it to you if you need yeah. like, That's just my personality. <laughs> can I have your arm? Yeah, like you're you, a very fit arm. <laughs> <laughs> you can have my very fit arm. <laughs> So you've traveled all around the world uh, and you've got different people in your sweat community. Have you noticed different cultures have different sort of fitness routines? Yeah, like it, depending on where you live and like it, there's lots of factors. There's like the weather outside or the, the foods that you eat, but like the world is trying. We're trying so hard and we're trying so many different things. And there's not one place that's like absolutely killing it. One place that's not like Dubai here. There's so many beautiful and amazing gyms that you can go to. Mm -hmm. Whereas like in Australia, like there's a lot of outdoor stuff that you can that you can go to and yeah. you go over to Europe and people are biking and running and using like the terrain to like actually use. It's incredible. So the world mm -hmm. is doing really well. Um, yeah, I don't even know what the question was. I'm just telling, <laughs> telling you how well, well, well yeah. we're doing. <laughs> the world we're doing, is trying. We're doing good, guys. But have you noticed sort of that there's different trends in different countries? So like in Dubai, do you find, I don't know, uh, is running a big thing here? I guess it is. I don't know. Like I've only been here for, well, yeah, I'm last, asking time I, you. last time I came here was 2019 and I okay. arrived yesterday and I'm getting asked about. <laughs> I'm like, Kayla, tell I me. I would like to interview you about <laughs> yes. this. Look, we do have a massive growing a running community. I guess we, we are. The problem is during summer. Absolutely. That's what I was saying. Weather it's dependent. Restricting. Yeah. So that's why you have incredible, like your gyms, guys, listening to this, if you, like you're in Dubai, your gyms are so amazing. Like so, your indoor gyms, incredible. You have incredible equipment. You have amazing air con. You've got like, and this is like clean toilets, can, clean toilets. You yeah. have protein shakes like, that you can have after your workout. You've got yes. food in your gyms that you can have. Like you have so many things. Our gyms are not, <laughs> yeah. not like yours. Yours are incredible. Literally, I just recently joined this gym and I'm going sort of through a body transformation thing. And uh, and the the equipment at this gym is just mind blowing. Machines I've never even seen before. Same. I went into a gym yesterday and they had a room just for chest, just for back, just for legs. Like I was like, oh my goodness me, this is incredible. <laughs> what uh, what gyms have you been in in Dubai? Like over the course of oh, the last few years, what are your favorites? Don't, do, don't ask. You me. don't remember no the names? Idea the okay. Names. <laughs> one started. The one that had all the different things started with B. And there were so many bodybuilders in there. They're going to be so sad you don't remember. I'm <laughs> so sorry, guys. The, the B gym with all Barry's? the bodybuilders. No, no it's not. No, Barry's. no, no. Okay. B O B U B O R or is it B U something? Venus. Oh wow! Big Bin shout out to yeah. these guys. <laughs> I went to a gym once. It was it was cool. It was what? Well, it's so ex it sounds really exclusive it's and special. So I have not. never it's even so heard not. of it. It's so cool though. I love that so much. And if someone's listening now and someone really wants to get fit and they're a little lazy or they feel lethargic and they don't know how to kickstart their fitness routine or well-being what what three things could they do to get them back into gear i mean not to plug sweat but to plug sweat yes download sweat because and let me tell you why look there's something for everyone in there and if mm -hmm. you are if you are someone that you know only has 15 minutes there's workouts that are short express workouts that you can do in the comfort of your own home yes. if you want to do things like pilates or you want to do a strength session or you want to just work out at home with zero equipment there is yep. something in there for you mm -hmm. my tips are to start small set a small goal start small maybe just doing something once a week mm -hmm. then my next tip is to add things in rather than take things out because yeah. especially as women because i've only ever worked with women they're so quick to remove things let's remove carbs let's not do this let's not do that rather than mm -hmm. being like let's add in some water let's prioritize sleep 
Like, let's make sure our diet is a little bit more balanced or a yeah. little bit more Mediterranean or whatever mm-hmm. it is. Like, let's do that sort of stuff. So add some good things in, start small, set small goals and just start working out from home. Yeah. Try and be a little bit independent rather than relying yes. on a trainer standing over you telling you what to do. Yeah. Yeah. A little bit of independence makes you feel confident. What are a couple of nutrition tips that you think are gold? My, oh, my nutrition tips that I think are gold? Look, yes. again, I'm not a nutritionist. Um, so, and I've always had a positive, like, um, what is it? What is it? A positive outlook on food. Like yes. I love it so much, but like my nutrition, oh my God, prioritize water. That's my first thing. Like drink more water, especially here. It's so hot and people mm-hmm. forget. So that's one thing. Balance your diet out. So like when I say balance, I'm not saying like you, ha- you can't, it's not like, oh, I have a donut. So then I have to have a salad. It's not that it's just okay. finding something that works for your body. That makes mm-hmm. you feel balanced. It makes you feel like you're living, not like yeah. you're suffocating. Um, that's my other one. And what else is my nutrition tip? What do I do? More olive oil. (laughs) Yes. I love that. And like like protein is so important as well. I think there's so many tips. I could give you so many, but again, I'm not a nutritionist. Yeah. You know, I actually spoke to a chef and uh, she was saying that her top tip to use with any food is olive oil. I love olive oil so much. With with absolutely any. Put it on your skin, drink it, whatever. <laughs> the other day I had an ear infection. I had to put it in my ear and it fixed everything. It's so great. Oh, I'm not a doctor, <laughs> but like it works. <laughs> yes. You're like, I'm not a doctor, but <laughs> do it. <laughs> um, so from your perspective, how important is it to stay fit and how how much does that actually help with your mental health? Okay, think about someone that has poor mental health and someone who doesn't want to do anything, doesn't want to go anywhere. They're very static. They're at home. They might be in bed or they might be on the couch. They're not moving. They're upset. Like that's what you do. When you don't feel good, you just sort of withdraw. Mm-hmm. So moving your body does the opposite. So moving your body, uh, you get more oxygen in. You start feeling better. You start, um, you get all these endorphins. You get happier in your thoughts for a second can like level out. Not only can they level out, they can actually go away depending on what yeah. you're doing. Mm-hmm. So it's so important if for your mental health to move your body. Now, how you move your body is completely up to you. Find something that works for you. If it's yoga, it's yoga. Pilates, running, strength training. Don't try and jump on fads when you are not feeling good. So mm. when you're not feeling good and everyone is cycling around you, don't think that you getting on a bike is going to make you feel better. You have to move your body for you. And if that means just going for a walk, do that. Yeah. You deal only, well, mainly with women. Uh, tell me about women's hormones. Oh, it's like, let me tell you about my hormones. So I have, I have <laughs> tell me everything. I have, um, I'm lucky, not lucky, to have endometriosis, right? Oh, right. So this is like so, um, it's so hard for me when it flares up. You have to go into surgery. There's no other way to cure. It just keeps coming back. So mm-hmm. I know how much firsthand hormones can affect how you feel, how you train, especially I've had two kids and my my youngest is 10 months old. So I've just come off the back of like a bunch of hormones and them wow. going absolutely everywhere. And like there are days where you don't want to do anything. You really need to listen to your body. Like absolutely. If you need to rest, rest. Like if you're in the middle of your cycle and you just you just can't. Like for, I was having cis bursts every your- month through ovulation. Oh my gosh. Through every month through ovulation. <laughs> That's like painful. it was so hard and then it's a two week recovery. So you just constantly feel like you're failing. You constantly feel like you're behind. Wow. So like you need to get on top of that and level those out before you go and do anything crazy. But moving my body, like going for walks was such a life changer for me. And with endometrio- in, I can't even endometriosis, say endometriosis, yeah. endo, should I just call it endo? endo call it endo. <laughs> uh, they normally say you have fertility issues, right? Correct. That was not the case for me. Okay. So I'm like... I just want to say for anyone who has endo right now and is going through fertility problems and issues, I am so sorry. That was not the case for me. I had okay. two healthy babies. Yeah. Um, and I'm very grateful for that. But yeah, they do tell you that. That's the actually the first thing they tell you. And when wow. I was younger and I was first diagnosed with it, I remember the doctor saying, be prepared to not be able to have kids. Wow. And I was like, oh, like I was so young and it was so painful to hear, even though I had no intention of having kids, I was so young. But I was like, that's really hard. To hear yeah i think as you get older and as you want a baby if you hear that again it's just like it breaks your heart into a thousand pieces and you just want options even if you're young and absolutely. you're not sure if you want kids you still want that option absolutely 
but health and fitness and food and sleep all, I guess, really all help. All play a huge part. I have no idea what my life would be like if I ate terribly and, and yeah. didn't prioritize my sleep, didn't drink water. Like, it would, it would, my body would be a mess. You have to look after yourself. You have one, one body. And if someone wants to sign up to the sweat program, what kind of things can they find in there? Oh, everything. Like literally everything. There is something for everyone. And I made sure, even through my programs, there are other trainers in there, but me alone, yeah. like I have pregnancy, so you can work out during pregnancy if you want to. Mm-hmm. Post-pregnancy, I have low impact. Like I have high intensity. I have strength training. Like it's all there, even in my programs, let alone there are so many other trainers in there with their amazing programs. What do you think is the ideal amount of calories for women? Oh, I'm not answering that question. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm not answering it's that It's controversial. <laughs> like, it's so controversial. That is, it, it's very, very dependent on your goals, your yes. body, like what you want to do. I would n- not recommend. That is the first thing. Do not count calories. Please do not count calories. Right. Like if you are, if you are prepping for a competition, great. But, like, if that's the first thing that you're going to do as your stepping stone into health and fitness, you're going to end up miserable. Please don't do it. There's no (laughs) recommended amount. Healthy, balanced diet. In the Greek culture, you definitely do. If I told my grandma, I would get a smack across the back of my head. (laughs) Boom. (laughs) What do you think are some misconceptions about personal trainers slash fitness influencer, which you (laughs) you don't want to be called? Personal trainers or like training with a personal trainer? Uh, personal, tra- let's go with, let's answer both uh, okay. with personal trainers first. What's a common misconception about yeah. a personal trainer? Yeah. I have no idea. What do you think there is? Uh, like you guys only eat chicken and broccoli oh, all day. Oh, yeah, that. Like, okay, so like we work out for hours and hours a day. Yes. Like people think that we are, we are really strict with our diets. So that's actually funny because this morning I was in the hotel and there's obviously there's a buffet there and they have pastries as you walk in. So as you walk out, the pastries are also as you walk out. And I was like, I want a donut. Like, I just wanted this chocolate donut. Yeah. It was just sitting there. So I like took the donut and I walked out. And this lady was like, you're eating a donut. And I was like, yeah. yeah. Who cares? Yeah. <laughs> like, she's like, I just didn't think you'd eat that type of food. And I've had that happen to me in New York. Someone tapped me on the back. They're like, are you allowed to eat that? And I turned. I was at a restaurant. I was eating pasta. I was like, yeah, I'm allowed to eat that. She's like, amazing. Like, she, her was, mind like, was, was blown. blown. I think as women, we really struggle with guilt. Food guilt. I know I have it. I'll eat something and then I'll come home and be like, why did I do that today? Like I overate or, you know. I get that. I don't get that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that's, so this is where, I, this is where I suck at answering these questions because I've never had, I've never felt guilty mm-hmm. for eating food. However, I am a trainer and I have had thousands of clients and I understand that they feel that way. Yes. But I would love for there to be another person here that could break down why that they happens. feel that way mm-hmm. because I don't know exactly what it is that someone goes to eat something that's delicious and then leaves and goes, why did I eat that? Yeah. I'm like, yum. That, and then I tell everyone, I literally go, went to a restaurant just then. I went around. I was like, oh my God, yum. We just had the best food. It was so delicious. We ate this, 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 and this. Like that's how I see food. Right. And I don't know how to make other people see food like that. I think it's just really, I don't know. I, like I'm, I'm a lot about energy as well and so I just think it's it's having this sensation of feeling light after you eat it rather than psychologically sometimes you automatically just feel heavier even if it's not the case right right? okay like you think if I eat that pastry I'm going to eat it and then regret it like because because (laughs) I I put on a kilo or something no I don't I don't understand one I don't understand this but two like I also think that like when you eat and this is maybe it's a Greek thing but like we eat and we eat till we feel good. Mm-hmm. We don't, I don't walk out of anywhere and be like, I massively overate. Now I feel physically sick. It's like the food's reacting with my body. I don't do that. I, mm-hmm. I eat and I, until I feel good and then I stop. Yeah. And is that like, maybe that's not the case for everyone. Look, you're looking at me like yeah. I have the answers. <laughs> I'm trying you. to. You're like, I'm trying to. answer about nutrition, <laughs> Kayla. But I'm like, that's not me. Like, and I don't want to be here and pretend that I'm like, okay, this is what you do when you feel guilty. Like, yes. you sh- my answer is you shouldn't feel guilty. You mm-hmm. shouldn't eat foods till you feel good and you should eat what you want to eat but also nothing that will if you know you're not good with for example i want to eat cheese okay because it doesn't make me feel good i'm lactose intolerant or lactose sensitive yes so i avoid that like do you know what i mean so 
Right. But everything else I eat. You know, I watched this documentary called Blue Zones with the fire. I also watched that. Did you see it? N- nowhere in there did they say calorie restrictions. Nowhere. <laughs> N- nowhere in there like I specifically watched one around Greece yes. but like yeah they the, it's to feel good it's it's finding foods that will make your body feel good so when you're yeah. eating yes if you're going to eat a whole loaf of bread yeah no one is going to feel great no one apart from Jay who can eat 2 liters of ice cream and feel nothing like, <laughs> yeah. he is the exception to this world like I don't understand but like if you're going to sit down and you're going to have for example like some uh, I was about to say in Greek but now I've got to work out what it is it's called vlitha but it's like greens like okay. bo- like greens with lemon yes. then you have some beautiful meat and then you have like a tomato salad and a little bit of pita bread you'll feel amazing like yeah. you should feel good after that yeah well, for anyone who doesn't know the blue zones, there's five places around the world that are considered blue zones, and it's people who are the happiest and live the longest. And what's the name of the place in Greece that they live the longest? I think it's Ikaria. Please uh-huh. don't, please don't quote me on that. Okay, but I'm pretty sure it's it's that. It's called Ikaria. Yeah. Right. They probably practice that same thing across all of Greece, right? Yeah, and they they also eat what they grow, which is really yes. important. So, like, if you're wanting to start to feel better about the foods that you're eating I would grow them myself and it's Mm -hmm. not hard to grow things like tomato and cucumber you just need a little bit like you just need a planter box do you have a little garden at home I have a big garden at home and it is run by my grandpa and he is like (gasps) stop it he's like in charge of the garden Jay sent me a message the other day he was like sweating it's like so hot there and he's made Jay tie the tomato plants to the pieces of wood so they grow up in a vine like it's (laughs) hilarious and do your kids play in the garden and pick things and Mm, Anna's good at it Jack's no he'll just he has he needs to be locked out of there he'll okay, just break yeah, everything step over everything <laughs> uh, so I want to do this thing called rapid questions with okay. Kayla no nutritional ones no nu- I don't think no. I have you can just answer like one one word answers mm-hmm. or a couple of words let's do it okay rapid fire questions with Kayla <laughs> why am I scared <laughs> They're not, they're really, they're really easy. Okay. Sweat or rest? What do you think is best? Don't, wait, that was the hardest (laughs) first question. It's okay, you feel like it's a trick question. Because the the company that I own is called Sweat, so it's like, (laughs) do sweat or do nothing? That's what you just said to me. Okay, start again. Sweat or, like, I'm going to say, I'm like. It was supposed to be a one word. (laughs) This this has turned into a shambles. All right, I'm going to say sweat. Love it. Morning run or evening fun? Which one? This sucks. Let me tell you why. <laughs> I hate running and I don't go out at night. Morning walk. Morning walk. Weights or dates? What Weights. elevates? Weights. Yoga or Pilates? Which excites? I think Pilates. Dubai heat or cool retreat? Dubai what? heat. Smoothie or juice? What's your use? Juice. Really? Yep. Not a smoothie. No, because I don't like milk. I'm just oh. I, I associate smoothie with milk. With Lactose milk. Lactose intolerance, not good. What do you think about like? Do juices have a lot of sugar? Oh my god, no. They don't, they're okay. Okay, they're good. Okay, juices they're good. are good. All all juices. I think juices are great. Don't yes. have them as your main meal, but like okay. a juice, great, perfect. Love it. Stairs or sprints? What makes you wince? What makes me wince? I mean, that means what makes me not want to do it. Yeah. No stairs. No stairs. You don't like stairs. Mm-mm. Do you use the stair machine? Mm-mm. Okay. <laughs> I mean, yes, I love it. A, a lot of fitness, a lot of people on Instagram love using the stair machine. <laughs> yeah. The camera at the back. Yeah, let's just film their whole session and see how much they love it. <laughs> not the five steps they do for the camera. Exactly. Gym class or grass? Oh, that's a hard one. Grass. Bike or hike? Which do you like? None. Hike. Protein shake or homemade bake? Homemade bake. Sunrise sweat or sunset? Get set. Mm, Sunrise. You have sunrise? Yep. What time do you normally wake up? 5.45, 6. Every day. That's so weird in Dubai, by the way. I went to the mall way too early. There was nobody there. What time did you go to the mall? 10. Oh, so, yeah. <laughs> Do I ever laughing at me? Nobody goes to the mall that early because the malls here close like midnight, right? So, yes, I yeah. went later that yeah. night and had a very different experience. Yes. To buy mall. Mm-hmm. Uh, cardio or lifting, which is more uplifting? Lifting. 
Love it. There you go. You did okay. You yeah, did, did great. Okay. What the, what's with the poems? Yeah, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Why is it rhyming? I don't know. I was trying to be creative. And uh, also some some inspiring words or motivating words about somebody who is finding it difficult to get back into fitness. Absolutely. If you are someone who is finding it so difficult to get back into fitness, whether you are post-pregnant and you had an injury or you're just not feeling your best, the key here is to start small. So do things, do the following things and really listen to me as I say this. Make sure you prioritize your sleep. So you're prioritizing your rest. Make sure you drink more water. You're adding in hydration. Make sure you start small. So make sure you're doing something that is under 15 minutes your first session make sure that you can do something that you love don't jump on trends don't don't jump on what everyone else is doing find something that works for you and find something that makes you feel comfortable and start again start small once a week is enough and then slowly build up don't go in too hard where can we follow you and your journey and download sweat i mean you can follow me on instagram kayla at Zenas, or you can just download sweat off the app store sweat is literally where it's at right now Thank you, Kayla. Thank you so much.